Well, hello, everybody. Hey, we've got a pretty exciting little math puzzle here. Uh, we're going to get into it right now. But hey, before we do, if you are a math teacher and you'd like to see how to use this in your classroom, I've got a couple free resources for you. We'll kind of unpack that at the end of the video. So stick around. Hey, so here's what we got. Just to make sure we're all clear, we have a semicircle. A square with an area of 64 is inscribed. The center of the circle of the semicircle is right here, but that also bisects the bottom of the square. We're trying to figure out what is the area of this square over here. So we know the area of the square is 64. Since we know the area of the square is 64, we can figure out that the side is 8, right? Because if the area is 64, that means the length squared is 64, so the length is 8. Now, because the length is 8, the side length is 8, we know that half of it, which would be from this corner here to the center, will be 4. So we can actually make a right triangle right here. We can figure out this hypotenuse. And the reason that would be really useful is that hypotenuse also happens to be the radius. Now, maybe you don't see where that's going yet, but you see over here, this would also be the radius, and we can make another right triangle. And from this right triangle, perhaps we'll have enough information to figure out the height of this square. And of course, if we know the height, then we can figure out the area of that purple square over there. So... Let's go ahead and take a look at this rectangle or this triangle right here. <clears throat> we know that its height is 8. We know that its base is 4. So Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is c squared. That's going to help us figure out that the hypotenuse is the square root of 80 because 8 squared plus 4 squared is 64 plus 16. Take the square root of both sides, 80. Now, perhaps you don't actually have to simplify the radical expression right here. But it's good to stay sharp, right? So let's go ahead and take, let's just take a look at it real quick. If you have the square root of 80, the way you handle simplifying this is you take that radicand and you factor it to find the largest square factor. There's two square factors that jump out to me, 4 and 16, but because 16 is bigger, it's going to be a little quicker. So 80, square root of 80 is the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 5 is the square root of 5. It's irrational. We don't have to write the little multiplication symbol in the middle. So we have 4 times the square root of 5. That's how you write it. That is our radius. The radius is 4 times the square root of 5. So let's use that. Draw, no, draw another triangle right here. And let's see if we can figure out how to write an expression using the Pythagorean theorem to find this side and the bottom. Now, that base, that longer side over there, well, we don't know what this part is from here to here. So let's call that x, right? That's x. So this entire base would be x plus 4. Because it's a square, this height would also be x. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we've got base and height, x plus 4 and x. We've got the hypotenuse, which is the radius, which is 4 root 5. So let's go ahead and write all that out. a squared plus b squared is c squared. So x squared plus x plus 4 squared equals 4 times the square root of 5, that whole entire number squared. Let's go ahead and uh, unpack this a little bit. x plus 4 squared is, of course, not x squared plus 16. Be very careful. You can't distribute an exponent over addition, right? So this means the base times itself, so x plus 4 times x plus 4. That's going to be x squared plus 8x plus 16. Where the 8 comes from is when you multiply this using the shortcut FOIL anyway, the outside, x plus four, x times 4 is 4x. The inside, 4 times x is 4x. 4x plus 4x is 8x. So let's go ahead and rewrite this over here. We've got x squared plus this thing, remember, x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 4 root 5 squared. So now let's simplify that 4 root 5 squared. Take it and multiply it by itself. We have get 16 times the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is, of course, 5. 16 and 5 makes 80. So this is what we have. So let's go ahead and simplify this, clean our screen up a little bit. <clears throat> so we get 2x squared plus 8x plus 16 is equal to 80. We're going to go ahead and move the 80 to the other side using inverse operations, get it set equal to 0 because it is quadratic. So worst case scenario, we could use the quadratic formula. But this one is factorable. We can take out a 2 from each term, making this a little simpler making the factoring way simpler because now a is 1, which means we only have to figure out what two numbers multiply to c and the same two numbers add to b. So let's see, negative 32 and 4. So that would be 8 times 4, right? 8 is positive, 4 is negative because negative 8 or negative 4 plus 8 
positive 4. So now let's take each of these factors, set them equal to 0, use inverse operations to solve, and we're going to get that x is equal to either negative 8 or positive 4. Well, 8, sorry, x is a distance, so it can't be negative. x is a positive number, so x is equal to 4. Since x is equal to 4, the side of the purple square is 4, which makes its area 4 times 4, which is 16. Pretty cool problem. Hey, uh, like I was saying at the beginning, if you're a teacher, I've got a couple of ideas for how you can use this in the classroom. I'll put a link in the description so you can down all, download these these resources. They're, they're my gift to you. I think it's kind of a fun problem, and I think this is a fun thing to bring into a classroom, so I want to help out. So look, here's the two ways that I'm thinking about. This could make a really great weekly challenge problem. Not everybody has to do it, only the kids that are interested, but it could be a lot of fun. So you could print it off, you could post it, and um, post it in Google Classroom. Uh, there's a Google Forms method I have. I got set up for you. So I'd post it, wait for a week. I'll show you how that works, the Google Form, here in just a second. It also would make a great lesson. Uh, you could use the PowerPoint that I used to make the first part of this video and present that in class. Use the Socratic method. Kind of be the student's guide, encourager to help them take some academic risks, work on communication, and instill some of those great those great math habits in the classroom. Now, both of these things I'll make available to you. The Google Forms looks kind of like this. The students are going to be, sent, be presented with the problem. They're going to be asked if they're ready to answer the question or if they want to get a clue. And I see a typo here I'm going to have to go back and fix. Anyway, um, if they choose the clue, this is what it looks like. Or they could just choose to go ahead and answer it without a clue. Now, if the first clue is not enough, they can select to go ahead and see another clue. And this second clue would look like this. And they could use that. And then they can go ahead and answer it. So all of this stuff is in the description. There's a link in the description to all of these things for you. Uh, for other stuff, visit my website, on teachingmath.org. I try to put together lots of powerful things that are easy for creative teachers to use kind of turn the class upside down, make it a little bit more exciting, make it a little fun, uh, put students in charge of learning. Oh, man, I get really fired up about teaching. Anyway, hey, I thank you for your time. I hope you have a, have a great day, and I hope this was a exciting little video for you. Cool little math puzzle there, and uh, I'll talk to you later.